Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a tutorial on how to set up multiple monitors within DCS. Uh, for myself, I have uh, two monitors. Uh, one is my main screen cockpit, and the other I actually use uh, with the Thrustmaster uh, multifunction displays, which is actually a piece of hardware, uh, kind of an overlay, if you will, uh, that allows me to uh, use the uh, multifunction displays within the A10 or the KA50 uh, by pressing buttons instead of uh, pressing the keyboard or joystick. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing we have to do is we have to actually set our uh, screen resolution uh, up in such a way that it covers both of the screens that I have. So if I go up to uh, Options, and mine is set to 3200 by 1080. The 3200 is the size of the total screen space that I have for both monitors. Uh, the access ratio, aspect ratio is uh, 16 to 10. And of course, my, uh, my monitors file, which I'll show you in a few minutes, uh, is set to camera plus uh, MF uh, CD on the right. Uh, the, that's both the left and right on the right. So that's all you have to set up for that. Just make sure that, and generally speaking, uh, no matter how many monitors you have, you would select the down and you'd select the highest one because DCS seems to uh, select it pretty well uh, with regards to what you have. Uh, so that should be all you need inside of DCS. Uh, so now what we'll do is we'll exit DCS and uh, we'll go back and I'll show you uh, how I come up with the 3200 and also how we set up the monitors file. So now that we've exited DCS, I'm going to show you how I came up with the 3200 resolution uh, inside of uh, DCS. So if I right click on my desktop and go to display settings, you'll notice that I have two monitors. If I go to advanced display settings, you'll notice down here that my resolution for my number one monitor is 1920, and that's in width, and the second one is 1280. So if you total those up, you come to 3200. And as I said, DCS is really good at determining this anyway. So generally speaking, you won't have to worry about it. Just pick the highest one. And I, I believe most of the time you'll, uh, you'll end up with the proper uh, resolution. So I'll exit this. Now what I'm going to show you is how to set up the monitors file itself to determine uh, what DCS will actually show up. So right here you'll see that the camera plus LMFCD on the right side is selected. So I'll double click on that to open it up. This is the actual monitors file. This is the monitors file that DCS will use to determine the screen resolution and how everything is arranged. And this is both in the GUI, uh, the graphical user interface, and inside the, uh, the simulation itself. So first thing we'll look at is, uh, we'll, we'll just look at the viewports here. So uh, viewports, this is the center, which in, in my case is actually the, uh, the cockpit and also the GUI. So X and Y, of course, is the starting location for this viewport, which would be in the top left-hand corner. The width is going to be 1920. This is for the graphical user interface and also for the cockpit itself. And if you remember, 1920 is the resolution of my main screen. Height will be whatever the screen height happens to be, okay? Uh, we'll ignore DX and DY uh, for now, and the aspect, of course, will be screen aspect, which in our case should be 16 by 10. So that will give me both the graphical user interface setup uh, and also uh, the cockpit itself. So now let's look at the next one, which would be the left multifunction display. And you'll notice that I, I did numbers here, uh, just make it easy to look at. So my we look at X and Y again. Now the X, of course, is left and right or horizontal. So it will actually start 1920 plus 75 pixels uh, to the right, which means it's going to be on my right-hand monitor 75 pixels in. Uh, and the Y, which is the up and down, is going to be 620. Now, Y75. In my case, because I'm using the Thrustmaster multifunction displays, I actually need to move my output from my MFCD to a position on the monitor that will show through the, uh, the Thrustmaster MFCDs. I, hopefully that isn't too confusing for people. 
Now, in your case, you would just put them wherever you want. And what you will have to do is you will have to do some experimentation. You'll have to change these numbers, go back into the game, see where they show up, make adjustments. The Y is the same thing, of course, because I've got my uh, multifunction displays at the bottom of my uh, physical monitor. Width and height, I've simply set up uh, with a variable called size. Uh, that's 408 because that's the width and height of the open space inside of the Thrustmaster multifunction displays. So now if we look at the right MFCD, it's essentially the same thing, except it's 1920 plus 800, which means it's on the right-hand side of my monitor. And, of course, the same thing up and down or uh, with the Y. And, of course, the size is the same. And, of course, the user interface main view is viewports.center. So that, that's what sets up this to be the graphical user interface. So hopefully that, that explains this a little bit. Um, one of the things I am going to do as well is I'm going to show you how we get the actual multifunction displays up. Uh, in other words, what tells DCS to what to display when we select left MFCD and right MFCD. And we'll get to that in a moment. Okay, so now let's look at, have a look at um, what exactly and how exactly the uh, MFCDs are exported from DCS uh, and able to be displayed on a second monitor. So if you look at my, uh, my file path here, this is where we're going to be going. It's under basically the uh, open beta mods, aircraft, A10C cockpit, scripts, MFCD, and indicators. So fairly lengthy uh, file path. The file we're looking for is MFCD init. And if I open up this file, and I'm just going to close these other ones so we can look at this. There's two important lines uh, in this file that are used to actually uh, create the view ports. Number one is this one, which is the do file, lock on options, common script path, viewport handling. So that will actually tell DCS how to handle various viewports. And then there's, there's actually two lines in this file, but normally there's only one line. And it's this try, find, assign viewport function. So what it does, what this try, find, assign viewport function actually does is it goes into your monitor file and it looks for a viewport called, in this case, left MFCD, which, of course, we saw earlier. And we also have another one, which is right MFCD, because there are two MFCDs in the A10. This is actually what... Um, what actually tells DCS how to display and where to display the MFCDs. So now let's look at another example. I'm going to minimize this, and I'm going to go back up into the scripts, and I'm going to go into Digital Clock. And I'm going to go into Indicator, and again, I'm going to open up digitclock.init, or underscore init. And you'll notice that those particular two lines are not in here. So what that basically means is that this particular, the A10, does not export uh, the digital clock uh, and allow you to display it on another monitor other than in the cockpit itself. So let's change that. So what we'll do is we'll go back to the MFCD init, and we're going to co copy this over. And I'll go Control-C, go back here, go under here, Control-V it because it's exactly the same. Then we're going to go back to here, and we're going to go, and we're going to copy this. And then we're going to go back to here, and we're going to put it right underneath the indicator type common. So now, obviously, we have to change this left MFCD, and we're going to change it to D-I-G-I-T. Well, let's make it all uppercase. Digital underscore clock. So now it'll try to find a viewport called digital underscore clock. Now, right now, of course, in my um, aircraft and in, and in my setup, there is no viewport that's digital underscore clock. So where do we put it? Well, we go back to our monitors file. So if we go to open beta, config, monitor setup, and MFCD on the right, I'm going to make sure I got the right, uh, the way I always do this is I always cut and paste the name 
just because that way I know I don't have any spelling errors. And we're going to create a viewport right here. Okay, so digital underscore clock equals and and we're going to go x equals so i want it at we'll say uh, 1920 plus well we'll say 75 so that'll that'll do the x uh, side of it left and right of course y is equal to and i'll just make it uh, 20 down so it'll be just off there and i'm going to say the uh, width uh, equals we'll say 100 just for argument's sake and height equals 100 as well so now we have a now when we start up the program or up the game and we go into the a10 it should actually show up uh, a digital clock on the right hand side uh, 75 pixels uh, uh, on the new monitor down 20 and width and a height of 100 so let's test that and see if it works so now You'll notice on this screen, you've got your multifunction displays down here, but now you've also got the digital clock. So it's very, very easy to export uh, viewports that are not currently exported. One of the ones I'll also do next, just to show you again, is I will export the radar warning receiver and I'll put it over on the right hand side over here. Hey, welcome back. Um, we're now going to look at how to put the uh, radar warning receiver uh, on the second monitor. Uh, so, of course, obviously, first thing we got to do is find the init file, which in my case is in that location there. So you just have to adjust for yours. And what we're looking for is the ANALR69V underscore init file. So if we open it up, what we do is exactly the same thing we did earlier with the digital clock. Uh, so we'll, we'll go into the MFCD init file and we'll just cut and paste the, uh, the appropriate lines. It's much easier and you, less typing. So we just control C that. Go back to there. Put it there. Go back to the MFCD init. And we'll try and find this one. Go back to the init. Put it right. I put mine right after common. Now, obviously, we're not going to call it MFCD, so we're going to call it RWR underscore screen. So we now have it set up properly. We now have to go into our cameras file or our monitor setup file. And um, I always cut and paste this just so that I uh, don't mistype it. So we'll go in here. Put a, another viewport there. Uh, equals. So x equals 1920. Uh, let's put it, say, 500 pixels on there. Y equals, we'll just say 100 pixels down. And uh, width equals we'll say just to make it huge say 400 and height equals 400 i try to make mine square so so that's really all we have to do to export that now one of the things you know people will wonder well why have this at all there's a program called helios h-e-l-i-o-s uh, that you can download that allows you to build custom uh, basically custom cockpit layouts and this is one of the things you'd want to do for Helios is to set up these uh, these viewports so that they underlay uh, underneath the Helios uh, cockpit um, so maybe I'll make a video at some point in the future on how to set up Helios as well so now we have the radar warning scene uh, screen set up we'll exit out of here and uh, we're gonna go into the game and I'll see if it works And so as you can see on the right hand monitor, um, yep, we have our uh, radar warning receiver. I made it big enough so you could see it, of course. Uh, so it is, yeah, it is fairly huge. And just I'll bring this up on, uh, on there. But as you can see, that worked fine. 
So you could place that anywhere you want it on your second monitor. So uh, should be good to go. I think that's the end of now my tutorial. So uh, see you in the future. Hopefully I will uh, I'll put up a, a video tutorial soon on the Helios program.